Hey everyone, welcome to my channel techbeast.org. In my last video, we discussed about what is Internet of Things, what is Web of Things, and how Web of Things is complementing Internet of Things. If you want to get a brief introduction about Internet of Things and Web of Things, please check out the link in the description. In today's video, we are going to discuss about widely used web protocols in Internet of Things applications such as HTTP, WebSockets, and MQTT. So let's start with HTTP. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. HTTP is perhaps the most popular application protocol used in the internet and in today's web in order to send and receive messages between various systems in the network. HTTP is an asymmetric request response client server protocol. So meaning the client will request for an information from the server and the server will respond with the requested information if it is available in the internet. HTTP is stateless. So meaning the server will not remember the previous request sent by the client. So all the requests sent by the client to the server is independent. Okay, so in the diagram you can see a client and a server. For example, the client is requesting for an information. So we are going to browse a website here. So the client is requesting for www.techbeast.org. Then the server is checking for this information in the internet and once it finds this information it's responding with the beautiful web page that's how this http protocol works in simple this http protocol always runs over tcp and ip tcp is from the transport layer and ip is from the network layer of the osi model so let's talk in detail about http over tcp ip in my next slide http over tcp ip as I said before, HTTP runs over TCP IP in most of the scenario. The reason behind this is, uh, let's say uh, you are requesting for an information from the client to the server or the, the server is responding uh, to the client's request. There should be a packet delivery guarantee. Okay, so that's the main reason HTTP always runs over TCP IP because TCP has a property. So the property of TCP is uh, the TCP will uh, provide an acknowledgement. Okay, so whereas uh, UDP does not provide any acknowledgement. Um, okay, so TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol, whereas IP uh, stands for Internet Protocol. So TCP uh, is used to provide a, a communication uh, between uh, two systems or two computers or two two machines in the network, and IP is used to uh, provide um, a routing between these devices, and each device. Uh, will be uh, provided with the IP address in order to identify and send the data and packets uh, between these devices. Okay, so TCP IP is a transport and network layer protocol used to communicate between two machines using the uh, IP address. Uh, you can you can send and receive messages. Okay, so you uh, from the diagram uh, below you can see uh, IP is on the layer three and TCP is on the layer four, whereas HTTP is running over the TCP IP. Okay, so let's uh, see how this HTTP works in Internet of Things. Before I talk about how this HTTP works in Internet of Things, I want to introduce a new term called REST. REST stands for Representational State Transfer. So basically REST is a standard or you can consider it uh, uh, as a design okay, to communicate between systems on the web. Whereas HTTP is an implementation based on REST standard. Okay, so REST is a standard or design, and HTTP is an implementation following that standard. Okay, so if any architecture in the web follows REST standards, it is said to be RESTful. Okay, by default, um, if uh, a device uh, is working uh, based on this standard means, uh, in order to access the device, the device should provide a REST API. So API means application programming interface. Basically, it's a uh, it's a set of rules in order to make uh, programs uh, talk to each other, or you can say um, uh, web services uh, talk to each other. Okay, um, okay. So let's uh, take an example here. So I have a client. Uh, it can be any of your smartphones or your laptops or browsers, whatever. So and I have a smart bulb which supports HTTP and it's uh, running a web server inside. Okay. Uh, and the device provide a REST API which supports uh, get, put, and delete. So what is this uh, get, put, and delete? So basically, these are all the uh, HTTP verbs we call. So when you are uh, searching for a website uh, in from your browser, by default you are making a get request. Okay, that's how this HTTP works um, in normal scenario. 
so but but when it comes to rest api uh, there are some other uh, http verbs uh, we, we will have the option uh, to use for example put and delete so put you when you will use this uh, in order to change the state of a uh, uh, bulb you can use put request and if you want to remove this uh, uh, device or if you want to delete this device from the uh, server you can use a delete request okay so now i have a client i have a smart bulb supporting this http uh, protocol uh, providing a rest api I'm going to make a put request. For example, uh, the web server uh, inside the smart bulb is accessible over HTTP colon slash slash um, the web server dot com slash bulb slash properties slash on. Uh, okay, so I'm going to make a put request to this uh, HTTP endpoint and the bulb will turn on when once I make and the server will respond with some kind of status code as I said 200 okay. Okay, this is the acknowledgement. The server will make to the client okay so i received your request i have turned on so uh so okay 200 okay so it's saying uh, i'm fine now okay so that's how this uh, http works in internet of things so basically uh it can be anything you can let's say you have a smart sensor uh, you have any, any kind of iot devices each device will support uh, some 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 kind of um, uh, http verbs uh, get put uh, post delete so anything so basically how uh, this is how the http works in internet of things okay now let's talk about the websocket so what is a websocket so websocket is a communication protocol providing full duplex communication between the client and the server over a single tcp ip connection okay so how websocket is different from http http is unidirectional meaning the client will send a request to the server in one direction and the server will respond to the client in the another direction so basically it's just unidirectional but in websocket scenario both your client and server will establish a full duplex communication and the connection between the client and server will always remain open as long as the client or server explicitly close it okay so a websocket is also an application layer protocol located at layer 7 in the osi model and it depends on the transport uh, transmission control protocol at layer 4 okay so today uh, the most of the modern browsers uh, which we are using like firefox chrome everything supports this uh, websocket so basically uh, websocket is one of the html5 standard okay so a lot of uh, web applications today support uh, websocket and there are wide range of uh, iot applications or under development using this uh, website so let's see um, so here you can see so basically uh, the client and server uh, is a bidirectional communication between the client and server using a single tcp ip connection in order to send and receive uh, messages so now let's see how this websocket works in internet of things okay i have a client so it can be anything as i said your smartphone or browser and i have a smart bulb supporting websocket now okay so basically how this websocket works is the client will always uh, do a handshake with this uh, uh, server first so for example it's going to use a http get request by mentioning uh, that uh, upgrade my connection to websocket okay uh, once uh, the server receive this uh, request from the client it will respond with 101 i am switching the protocol to websocket okay so now the smart bulb and the client will have a full duplex connection so meaning the client can send anything to the uh, smart bulb and the smart bulb can send anything or all its information to the client in real time okay so that's how this websocket works so you should always make a handshake with the uh, server first if the client sub if the server supports or if the smart bulb supports websocket it will respond with 101 status code if it does not support it will still run on the http uh, you can access it over a rest api if it supports okay so if any of the client or server want to close the connection they can uh, close the connection of this uh, websocket okay so that's how uh, simple uh, the websocket is so we can use it for a lot of real time applications and why we need to use websocket so websocket is basically an uh, uh, internet standard and it's it, it's one of the uh, commonly and widely used web technologies in modern uh, web browsers nowadays okay so websockets are not uh, blocked by firewall and can traverse proxies so meaning web websocket always complements http so so it can run on a port port 80 or port 443 uh, in order to provide a secured uh, websocket okay uh, websocket is useful for real time communications without any delay in iot applications so you can always use uh, if you want to sensor data 
uh, you to show it on your dashboard you can always use a websocket connection in order to uh, send real time information okay then websocket use very less bandwidth than http okay whenever the http you are making a request uh, to the server there are uh, you are going to make uh, some kind of high bandwidth in order to make a request and get response but websocket since the uh, the connection is always open the bandwidth uh, requirement is very minimum than http and of course websocket is faster than http okay so these are all the advantages of uh, using websocket over http but uh, if uh, battery based devices if you are having means uh, it's always good to use um, http because websocket you are going to make the connection between the client and server always open which will drain the battery very fast okay okay now let's talk about mqtt mqtt stands for message queuing telemetry transport so i can uh, strongly say this is one of the trendy protocol uh, used by a lot of uh, uh, companies or developers uh, around the world okay for iot based applications so basically uh, what is mqtt so mqtt is an application rail protocol similar to http and websocket located at layer 7 in osi model which works on publish subscribe concept so in uh, websocket and http we call it a request response but here it is a publish subscribe concept okay so it runs on the top of a tcp ip similar to http and websocket here there will be a mediator uh, we, we we use okay we will use to communicate or we uh, to send uh, data between uh, your sensor and your uh, client device or whatever so we call it a broker okay so we always use a broker in order to send and receive uh, data so the broker can either be in local or in the internet let's say if you want to communicate uh, locally okay you can use a local broker or uh, let's say you want to communicate uh, with internet your device is somewhere and you want to access it somewhere uh, from the world so you can use you can use your broker available on the internet there are a lot of public brokers like hive um, uh, mosquito or so is a local broker so a lot of brokers are available open source brokers are available which you can make use of and one of the key feature of this mqtt is uh, this mqtt offers a quality of service okay so basically the mqtt offers three level of cures so what does it mean so QoS a zero, QoS one, QoS two. So QoS zero means it's just fire and forget. So meaning, uh, whatever the messages you published, okay, there won't be any delivery guarantee. So but the, the subscriber may get your message or may not. So there won't be any guarantee for your messages. QoS one means deliver at least once, okay. So for example, the published messages uh, will be delivered to the subscriber at least once. QoS two meaning deliver exactly once so the published messages will be delivered exactly once to the subscribers so whoever uh, subscribed to this particular topic the message will be delivered exactly once okay so this is one of the key feature offered by mqtt so basically this uh, mqtt will publish and subscribe via some uh, uh, some some kind of parameters called we call it topics okay so basically all the information or so all the sensor data whatever we publish uh, we will publish uh, on a topic uh, the subscriber will subscribe to this topic in order to uh, read the data okay so maybe let's uh, uh, take a look into a real life example so now let's see how this mqtt works in the internet of things scenario okay let's say you own a smart car or an autonomous car uh, which is having a lot of sensors like radar sensors uh, laser sensors ultrasonic sensors okay and you are planning to use mqtt in order to monitor the performance of the car and you want to get the data in real time and you want to monitor it in a dashboard okay so now uh, you are going to use a public trend uh, broker which is available on the internet and uh, what you are going to do is uh, you are going to publish your sensor data uh, to this broker so in this mqtt scenario your smart car and your client device both are clients and your broker is a server okay so your smart car will publish uh, the sensor data to the broker on the topic sensors slash radar uh, which uh, publish the radar data and sensors slash ultrasonic which publish the ultrasonic sensors data and you are using your client device in order to subscribe to this particular topic so subscribe sensor slash radar subscribe sensor slash ultrasonic once you subscribe the broker will publish the information to you 
so sensor slash ultrasonic publish sensor slash radar publish so you can able to read this data sent by the smart card so basically this publish and subscribe it's it's happening through tcp ip okay so that's how this mqtt works in a real world scenario so the smart card uh, and the broker so meaning the client and the server will always try to remain uh, or try to keep its connection open as long as possible okay the smart car will always send a frequent uh, ping request to the broker uh, in order to ensure that the connection is always uh, open to ensure the quality of service so that's how this mqtt works and now why mqtt why i need to use mqtt so uh, let's take uh, an example like uh, you own a, a farm land and you want to monitor uh, your farmland by deploying some sensors around the farmland okay so and there is no proper network connection there because farmlands will be somewhere around the corner and there won't be any proper uh, network connection there so you can uh, use mqtt protocol uh, under such uh, uh, scenario okay so mqtt is mainly used for constrained devices with the limited bandwidth or a limited battery uh, uh, so those kind of devices so mqtt always uses less battery power to publish and subscribe data okay and as you can see the connection uh, is always uh, secured using uh, tls so meaning the publish and subscribe uh, subscribe data is always encrypted over the web okay and mqtt has uh, a wide range of applications and that's the reason mqtt is widely adapted in a lot of iot application nowadays okay so i hope you guys uh, enjoyed this session and i hope you guys understood uh, what is the difference between uh, various iot protocols uh, like http mqtt and websocket and I hope you can confidently choose uh, your protocols based on your needs and you can build your iot application okay so thanks guys uh, thanks for watching uh, so your comments are welcome so every day i'm trying to improve myself so whatever your thoughts you can just uh, uh, put it in youtube comments and please subscribe to the channel and i will be making a lot of new uh, videos and we'll be talking more about open source cloud and a lot of uh, tracks are on the way so let's make technology uh, easy peasy for everyone and have a good day.